Right, so hello, my name is Jade Rose. This video is pretty much a wake up call. If you have been neglecting yourself, not taking care of yourself, ignoring your body's needs, no more actively self-sabotaging, this all stops today. We all wanna wear beautiful clothes and style ourselves nicely, wear nice makeup, but at the end of the day, if the foundation isn't there, it doesn't have the same effect. So we wanna start with the healthy, natural glow first, and then build on top. I want you to watch this video and really pay attention, listen closely, because there are just things that are so subtle that can literally make the biggest difference. I know this because I was that model who would show up on set thinking I could just show up however I wanted, not really taking things seriously. And then when the pictures come out, I'm like, I look a bit ill. And it's literally because of most of these seven things. If you watch all the way to the end, I'm gonna share with you the most important thing that I learned and was important to my journey specifically, especially as a model to maintain the most beautiful, healthy look possible. So let's go a bit deeper into hair and talk about a disappearing hairline. Disappearing hair in general. If you're having problems with hair loss, obviously it can be because of medical issues, but I do wanna talk about the two most common things that I see is number one, vitamin deficiency. Whether it's iron, vitamin D, protein. I always talk about nourishing your body and this is the reason why. Imagine like going on a diet and trying to look better by being slimmer and then ending up looking worse because you have no hair. So when your body feels like it's kind of in trouble, like and it wants to keep as much, you know, nutrients as possible, it wants to give the energy and that to the body parts that are very, very necessary. And then other things like your period, your hair, tend to be forgotten. With protein, it's really easy to add some protein in your diet. Eggs in the morning, maybe just make an omelette. You can make omelettes and put in so many eggs and not really feel how many eggs are already in there. You can add chicken to your meals, you can add tofu to your meals. Nuts have protein, cheese. I love a bit of Greek yogurt as well. For vitamin D, it's all about the sunlight. For me, when I'm working, I try to sit near a window. When I'm home, I try to sit near a window. Even right now, I'm near the window. Because I have quite dark skin, it is really hard hard for me to get more vitamin D. So it is really important to me, especially because I do feel a difference when I don't have enough vitamin D. Obviously there are supplements as well. During this kind of, you know, season, it's probably better for me to take the supplements. I've actually ordered the new vitamin D spray, which is coming next week. You really wanna be eating more whole foods. When you look at food, you know what it is. Avoid takeaways, avoid deliveries, avoid processed food. And when it comes to your eating all your fruits, eating all your vegetables, don't make it boring. Like it's not about, you know, eating you know, apples every day and cucumber and tomato salads every day. Like, no. You can have really fun like bowls with like quinoa and salmon and mango and just so many different things. Really think of what you like and make it fun. It just makes it easier. Next thing that causes hair loss is tension alopecia. So that means, you know, you don't understand how much hair I lost by using hair extensions, like clipping hair extensions and sleeping in them. The clips would like pull out the front of my hair and I literally had bold patches. Avoid really tight ponytails, wearing wigs all the time. Even me with my hair up like this, I don't wear my hair up like this every single day because if you keep wearing your hair the same every single day, you'll see like little bits of hair just fading away. A really big reason why you might look unhealthy is being dry. And when I say dry, I'm talking everywhere, like everywhere. But in this video, I kind of want to concentrate on the face. So skin, hair, lips. I want you to think about like cement, just basically anything dry. Eventually it cracks. And in general, skin just doesn't look right when it's dry. We want to be, you know, hydrated, moisturized, and that's what's going to give that plump, healthy, you know, juicy glow to our skin. You want to avoid anything that dries out your skin. As someone who suffered from severe acne and tried to use every single BHA exfoliator scrub to blitz my skin, I used to use real soap, like really cheap cleansers as well. It left me with really, really dry skin, huge pores, and it took me a while to fix. Honestly, if you have acne, Use an exfoliator, yes, but maybe once, three times a week maximum. But it's not about the percentage, it's about the formulation. So just because something is a higher percentage does not mean that it's better, but it does mean that it's more drying. 
and it does mean it can be more irritating. So you really wanna be careful. Same goes for cleansers too. Nothing that dries out the skin. Makeup wipes. If you wear a lot of makeup, I mean, I wear quite a lot of makeup for work as well. You wanna use a cleansing balm because it works on everything, even really, really tough foundations. If you use a makeup wipe, you're literally just rubbing more makeup to different parts of your skin. You are not taking it off. And then it contains things like alcohol, really drying ingredients that are really gonna dry your skin. This is the cleansing balm that I use. It's called the Clinique Take the Day Off. You can also use something like the Drunk Elephant one. That one's really nice. You can use the Elemis one, but I think this one is just good value. For absolute emergencies, I use this one. So this is the micellar water, the biodermal one. When I say emergencies, I mean cases where I don't have a sink. So let's say if I'm out and about, I'm you know in the city and then I get a call from my agent asking me to go to a casting and the casting has asked for me to come with no makeup and I'm wearing like a full face of makeup. Now I'll grab this. The Bioderma is a really big like kind of makeup artist classic. So anytime you finish a shoot, a makeup artist will normally have it anyway. I think it's because it just really works for most people's skin. So if you do have sensitive skin, it probably is a good shout. Both of these products are a good shout. I also think that if you live somewhere that has a lot of chlorine in the water, a lot of harsh water, then I do think that you should have, you know, something that balances that pH. So I use this cleanser by Purito. It's technically a K-Beauty brand. When it comes to second step cleansers, I love foam cleansers and traditional cleansers from super drugs or drug stores they tend to be quite stripping. Just a lot of cleansers in general. And again, we don't wanna be dry. But when you compare like a proper KBU blend to like the ones that you get like at the super drugs or the, you know, drugstore, this especially just feels completely different. Like it feels hydrating, soothing. I love swimming and if you're someone who swims a lot or loves swimming as well, then I do think it's important to have either a pH balanced cleanser or some sort of toner that kind of just balances your skin because of the chlorine in the water. I have got like a neutralizing shower head as well from Vitaclean, which is amazing. But if you wanna invest in that, then definitely go for that. It saved me many times when traveling. Of course, a moisturizer. If you start your day off with nice moisturized skin and then halfway through the day, your skin is getting dry, that moisturizer may not be for you. You need something that is a bit more first clenching. So I use this one, this is from COSRX. Again, another K-Beauty brand it is the Comfort Ceramide Cream. I'm all about ceramides. This cream has three different ceramides in it. Ceramides are all about healing your skin barrier. And since I am someone who had acne and I had a lot of, you know, acne scars, I'm all about the creams that heal your skin barrier. And for someone with dark skin, especially when you get acne scars, they can be a lot. The cream gives you just a nice, really healthy glow. When I'm not wearing makeup, it gives me a lot of confidence. It's not oily literally at all. It comes out in a texture that is slightly balmy, so you think it might be oily, but I'm telling you, none at all. I'm wearing it today, I wear it almost every day. I also use it overnight, but if you are someone who likes a really matte finish um, to your makeup, then maybe it might not be the best cream in the summer. By the way, I do wanna say though, when I'm talking about any of these products, I'm not saying that you should buy these products. I'm saying what works for me. These are things that I just love. And honestly, it's more about the actual routine. Lips is another way of looking dry. If you have cracked lips, it doesn't look healthy. It looks dry like a corpse. We need to drink more water. As human beings, a lot of our body is made up of water and we need to kind of, you know, replenish that. I wanna also use something on your lips that gives it, you know, a little bit of life. I never go without absolutely nothing on my lips. Like I have something in my bag. The least I have is the pink Vaseline, the one in the tin. So my mom has loads of them. I always just go and steal them from her house. More of like a proper color color. I like the Gucci. They're a really sheer, super moisturizing lipstick, but it's light and fresh like a lip balm almost. They are my favorite. They last so long and they're just gorgeous. This is the Charlotte silvery hyaluronic lip balms they are gorgeous as well especially for lipstick they are really really moisturizing if you want more of a color color this one might be better and then if you want something you know more lip balmy then the gucci is nicer you can obviously just use a lip gloss or any other lipstick but i just think that these are just more hydrating and moisturizing than a lipstick or a lip gloss bad breath is another sign when someone else has bad breath i do kind of give them the benefit of the doubt you don't know they might have a deeper illness 
or sometimes you know if someone's having some you know crazy dental work but most likely it might be bad oral hygiene so of course use a great toothbrush i use the sony care ones and i absolutely love my Sonicare toothbrush. It's one of my favorite things. I know it's crazy that my toothbrush is, is my favorite, but I love it. Tongue scrapers are really good. Water flosses are amazing. Definitely floss. Flossing, people sleep on flossing. Another one is yellow teeth. I have teeth in general, actually. A quick fix is probably, you know, the Instagram ones. There are so many brands who do this. I don't know why, but you can use those kind of blue light ones, the ones that have the gel and the syringes. If you use them a lot of times, they do actually brighten your teeth. The problem is they don't go so, so bright and sometimes they can leave little patches, so. I would say crest whitening strips are probably the best kind of quick fix. And you can also get your teeth obviously professionally whitened. Just be very cautious of whoever you go to. I think with dental care, you have to be quite, quite specific. Don't go to whoever who's cheapest, whoever is the closest, because the thing about your teeth, it's not like your hair, your hair can grow back. It's not like a bad facial, you know, your skin can heal. If something happens to your teeth, I mean, you only have one set of teeth. If you don't want to go for the teeth whitening, you can obviously just visit your hygienist. Everyone needs to be visiting the hygienist. I go twice a year and every single time I go to the hygienist, I'm telling you, I will get compliments from people who don't even know where I've just been saying how great my teeth look. Sleepy eyes, so that your eyes are the window to your soul. And if your soul is sleepy, your eyes are gonna look sleepy. There are, again, conditions that make you more tired vitamin deficiencies like iron, even like allergies, gluten allergies. If you have chronic fatigue, definitely go to your doctor. I have really low iron and I've been taking like the supplements all these years, but they haven't really been working that well for me. So I've decided that I'm going to go twice a year to get a IV drip. But a lot of the time it's not like a specific condition, it's because we're not getting enough sleep. There are so many rejuvenating things that are happening at night. It's really important to be able to recover, have that nine, eight hours sleep. But I think minimum is probably six, maximum maybe nine. 10 is really pushing it. I think anything over 10 is like, you don't wanna to sleep too much because you'll wake up feeling tired anyway. So these are the bedtime hacks I like to use. You wanna make sure that your bed, your sheets, everything is nice and cozy and comfortable. When you buy like bed sheets, I would rather have two bed sheets that I absolutely love, one that's on my bed, one that's in the wash, and then switch out whenever I can, then have a bunch of bed sheets that are just not very nice or just random, you know, you got them from your mum's house and you don't really love them. Keep bed sheets that make you feel cozy and warm and you love to get in. I also think a nice heated blanket is good. So if you have a very cold house and then every time it gets to the nighttime, you know, your bed is really cold and you don't like it. Underneath the fitted sheet, just pop one in and then you can warm it up. And as you're getting ready for bed, by the time you get in bed, it's nice and warm. I would definitely turn it off though before you actually go to sleep. Make sure you have your day for tomorrow planned in advance. This is number one, actually. Do this because if you do not have everything sorted, your schedule sorted, you know exactly what you're gonna do, you're gonna end up thinking about it during the night and then for me personally, I wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh my God, did I forget something? And you wanna just make sure you remembered everything. I love listening to just a nice soothing voice before I go to sleep. Something that's really positive, really calming, soothing. So there are guided meditations for stress release. There's ones for positivity. There are ones about achieving your goals so you can be you know, ready for tomorrow morning and feel like energized. So I get the guided meditation, play it, then put my phone on the side, away from me on the table get into bed with my you know heated blanket and then I can listen to them in my ears as I go to sleep when I'm done I just pop them off and I kind of just throw them on the side I like to have a South African tea so it's a rooibos tea a nice rooibos tea really helps me to kind of go to sleep nicely as well obviously I don't drink it too close to when I actually sleep because I'll actually wake up in the middle of the night and go to the toilet okay so let's do tip four in the morning when you look tired because I have those days many times sometimes i'm traveling from city to city and doing just a madness sometimes i have a mad week and in a mad week i wake up looking puffy tired and these are the things that i do so if you just hold the spoon over your eye 
it's nice and cool oh my god this feels so good so it's nice and cool and that will kind of soothe and calm any kind of puffiness another one is a jade roller definitely use one of those so you can you know roll your face you want to roll upwards and just give your face more of a contour less of the puffiness that you get when you are kind of tired and you're just waking up now with makeup you definitely want to use a color corrector this is the color corrector i use it is by charlotte tilbury so it is a very red color so if you have a similar skin tone to me this will probably work for you if you are lighter maybe you can go for a more orangey tone i sometimes actually go for the orangey tone my concealer is in a very orangey tone and that kind of cancels out kind of the darkness if you are even lighter than that or if you are very pale the more of a peachy tone will work really well for you i actually think charlotte tilbury has three different shades in this so you can try them so you use just a little bit wherever you're like you're more dark or wherever you might see like harder lines and i'm really tired i will get them literally sometimes down here and they will cross all the way here so dab a bit of the color corrector there but don't go crazy i've seen some tiktoks where people go really crazy and then on top you can put a little bit of concealer obviously you can just do the concealer by itself but you'll end up having to use more concealer and a lot of the times when you use quite a lot of concealer it can crack whereas when you use the color corrector it just gives it a more natural finish and natural look again drink water i'm telling you i sit here with a glass of water because honestly if i don't drink water throughout the day if i don't drink water while i'm with you right now it's hard for me like i don't have the same energy i have a filtered water bottle in my fridge i have a water bottle that i take with me everywhere to keep things cool and it just refreshes me refreshes my mind when i wake up i like to use the spray as well and it just revives me i even use this like sometimes during the day if i feel a bit like tired if i feel you know just a bit low energy it is called the tiger grass mist by dr jar for like long-term fixes with dark circles definitely use an spf now you want to use one that is quite light around your eyes something like this it is the invisible la roche posay one so this one is a factor 50 it's going to help protect that area from the sun if you already have dark marks there you don't want them to be darker maybe like on your eyelids if you know you have dark eyelids or just around your eye area in general do not use a lot because it will irritate your eyes with sunscreens i'm very specific i am i don't use any old sunscreen it has to be really thin it has to be you know super invisible lightweight because i don't want it to ruin my makeup and i also don't want it to leave like a blue tint on my skin no cast and also sunscreens can be really kind of oily sometimes and just give you spots and if you're already acne prone like me it's just a no so i really stick to this sunscreen because i know it works and i know it's good for my skin you can also use some niacinamide so i use this this is a fermented essence it's by perito three percent niacinamide which i think is plenty but there are other ones i think perito has other essences that have five percent niacinamide there are obviously other ingredients to you know brighten up the skin but i'm not sure if things like hydrochloroquine and very strong things like that should go in your eye area maybe a vitamin c would work well as well but yeah this is what i use i love it i think it's beautiful the finish of this is so so nice it feels watery in your hand and then when you put it on your face i don't know it's almost like it shifts into this like it was almost like a like a very beautiful oil but not a I don't want to describe it wrong but honestly this is one of my favorite favorite products especially for hyperpigmentation long hair that is unhealthy this one obviously doesn't necessarily mean you're unhealthy but it doesn't look great it doesn't look fresh healthy healthy hair is such a gorgeous sign of beauty and it doesn't matter what kind of length that you have you have to have healthy hair you have to keep on top of your trims honestly i used to never keep on top of my trims and i would have hair problems all the time and wonder why is my hair shedding why is my hair breaking so much and it's because i'm holding on to these dead ends these split ends there is nothing that is going to save split ends no split end trimmer nothing other than cutting your hair and in general i love that kind of blunt hair look as well when you have those raggedy ends even on weaves and wigs i don't really like raggedy ends like that i like a nice healthy looking chopped end get regular trims put it in your calendar guys if you know that you don't work weekends and you have to you know trim your hair every i don't know three months let's say that's four times a year you call your hairdresser right now after this video call your hairdresser and ask them to book you in 
for the next four times in this next year and you're good. You can like move them around close to the time, but just at least have the appointment. Use a really moisturizing shampoo. So I use the Miel shampoo and I absolutely love this. It feels so luxurious, so hydrating, moisturizing. It's weird because it's more of a strengthening shampoo, but actually whenever this is in my hair, it just feels lovely and moisturizing. This bottle has lasted me really long, so definitely worth it. Use a deep conditioner regularly, but I don't always use shampoo every time I wash my hair. Sometimes I use a co-wash. I love the co-wash by Pen10, definitely check that one out. Deep conditioner wise, I use a really simple one. This is the Aussie Three Minute Miracle. This is my travel version, so I do take like little ones, you know, on the go. This is the hair cream that I use is from Hask, so it's called the Curl Care. And I just love it. It's really nice and, you know, moisturizing. Again, it has a slight balmy consistency, but still not oily, which I love. Definitely recommend it for anyone who has hair like me. I spray my hair with water quite a lot just to keep it, you know, hydrated, moisturized. Even throughout the day, I might give it a little spray, you know? And then after that, I mix in the Aussie kind of SOS serum with some jojoba oil, and then I use that on my hair. So the process is more like moisturizing my hair and then using the oil to kind of lock in that moisture and keep it in for a while. Acne, now, this is the one that I struggled with the most. This is the one that changed the game for me. Out of everything, I think in my whole life, the biggest insecurity I ever had was my acne. It's definitely like your body's reaction to something that's going on inside. So it could be like allergic reaction, um, another one is hormonal problems. If you have polycystic ovary syndrome, maybe certain foods make your acne kind of flare up. Things like dairy. A lot of people have dairy, you know, intolerances. A lot of models I know don't even eat dairy. I eat dairy because I like tzatziki and I love, you know, a yogurt bowl. And I don't see the correlation with my skin, but I mean, a lot of people have said it really has helped. That switch to kind of, you know, from dairy milk to oat milk. I actually drink um, almond milk. I love almond milk. Really, when it comes to acne, I think the most important thing for anyone even with skin issues, any kind of skin issues, is a routine. Like I said before, the routine is the most important thing that you're actually doing every single day. Not, you know, buying like a super expensive random product that someone said was, you know, a, a miracle product. There are no miracle, well, there are really great products to be honest, but there's no like one miracle product that you use for you know, two days and then it's over. You need to double cleanse, you need to exfoliate. The sebum, the excess sebum is what is making the acne. You've got to get rid of it. That is what is clogging your pores. The best thing is to just go to a dermatologist. A professional is really gonna help you with your skin. I don't have a dermatologist, but I do have an esthetician. They're probably gonna recommend products with you, really work with you to really figure out what's the best thing for you. Anyway, those are my tips for a healthy, youthful, beautiful look. I would love to know what your tips are too. Please leave them in the comments. You never know who's struggling with something that you've already overcome, so it will be helpful. If you liked the video, remember to like the video, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Shh.